Shalom, and welcome to our history podcast. This is a production of KingdomPreppers.org. I'm your host, Kingdom Prepper, and you're listening to Churchianity, 2,000 Years of Leaven. We continue with our history. Part 8, Augustine of Hippo. Of all the Western Church Fathers, none is seen as a more towering figure than Augustine of Hippo, whose influence dominated the Middle Ages, particularly in the Latin-speaking world. Even now, he is still regarded as a major theological influence for both Catholics, given his views on the ancient Church and the relevance of its sacraments, and Protestants, given his views on grace and salvation. Some hold him in an even greater light than I have proposed here. Dr. Dorsey Armstrong, associate professor of English at Purdue University, says of Augustine, His was a mind the likes of which the world has only rarely seen. That great mind, she goes on to say, helped shape the very landscape of the Middle Ages in almost all its facets, the political, the religious, the intellectual, the social, and more. Even several centuries after his death, thinkers would return to this man and his writings for guidance and answers to myriad questions. He was so well read, it seems impossible that he would have found the time to do so much writing. And he wrote so many texts, it seems impossible that he could have been an active and involved bishop for his congregation. Yet he was all of these things and more. His writings were the single most influential body of work for all the great medieval minds that followed. He was destined to become the most important figure in the Catholic Church, not only in the Middle Ages, but arguably right up to the present day. We have reached a point in our historical narrative where we begin to move from the period of late antiquity into what historians consider the early Middle Ages. And in the late 4th and early 5th centuries, a major shift begins to take place, where the church is being shaped from within by highly influential leaders. Ambrose was one such figure, who we touched on in the last podcast. Jerome was another. He was commissioned to translate the scriptures into what became the Latin Vulgate. Other prominent figures were their contemporaries, and put together, these men are considered doctors of the church. Associate Professor Ryan M. Reeves, who we've quoted in past episodes, describes the role of a church doctor as follows. In Catholic history and in Catholic practice, a doctor of the church is someone who's given this honorific or this title as a way of saying that their theology, their writing, is synonymous, you might say, with Catholic teaching in general. Now, it doesn't mean that it rises to the rank of papal proclamation, but it does mean that all Catholics are, in a way, engaging with their thinking. From the Protestant perspective, it's more of honoring the significant changes in writing and deep reflection on Scripture that these men provide to the Church in the West. In both the West and the East, but increasingly, since many of these men are Latin speakers, it's the West that sees these great figures as part of their heritage. Well, by far, the most significant figure from this generation, from this period of frenzied activity, is Augustine. Really, you can't be hyperbolic about the influence and the importance of Augustine. Augustine is a man astride two periods of time. In fact, in many ways, Augustine almost embodies the change from the late antiquity period to the early medieval period. His writings sort of usher in all that would come after it. He's a bit like Luther in that way. Luther stood astride the medieval and the modern world. Well, Augustine stood astride the late antiquity or the ancient world and the early medieval world. Augustine's works are some of the most important works of all of church history, in fact. Again, it wouldn't be hyperbolic to say that outside of the New Testament, no single figure more shaped the Christian worldview or the theology of the entirety of everyone who came after him than Augustine. Born a Roman provincial in a minor commercial North African town called Tagaste in 354, 
Augustine, an Algerian of Berber stock, soon exhibited a gift for learning that was not missed by his parents. His father, Patricius, was a Roman official and a pagan at heart, though he would be baptized prior to his death. His mother, Monica, was a devoted Catholic who would later be granted sainthood by the church. Smitten as they were with their only child, the two exhausted their savings by sending Augustine to a nearby town to study. But young Augustine would get up to worldly exploits and would wander aimlessly with his companions after his parents' money ran out. Eventually, he was able to continue his studies in Carthage, the North African hub for political, economic, and cultural engagement in that Latin-speaking region of the continent. While he focused on his studies of rhetoric, which was among the highest pursuits in the Roman world at the time, Augustine also indulged in the many worldly pleasures Carthage had to offer. This soon led him to take on a concubine who bore him a son named Adeodatus, interpreted as given by the deity, meaning the creator, Yah. The child died while still in his teens. As a student of rhetoric, Augustine, like many others of his day, was readying for a career as either a lawyer, politician, or other public functionary. To listen to the full audio of this podcast, or to download a free MP3 version, visit our website, kingdompreppers.org, by clicking the link in the description, and journey with us on this important historic odyssey.